We're Hacker Twins, and we normally make our robot parts out of 3D printed plastic. But today, we're going to show you how to design and make your own out of sheet metal. Let's get started. Comment below for your chance to win our robot arm desk buddy, but you have to subscribe. So remember, like and subscribe. Let's unbox and review the parts we received from PCBWay before going through the 3D design software. And PCBWay actually sponsored today's video, so shout out to them for sending us these parts for free. The first thing I need to test is if the servos fit the different parts. I'll start with the hip and move down to the calf and foot. Now let's jump over to the computer. FreeCAD is our go-to open source CAD software. CAD stands for Computer Aided Design. If you're unfamiliar with it, we made a video called FreeCAD in 5 minutes, which you can check out. The link is below. We're installing the sheet metal library, and we're going to quickly go through an upgrade for the foot. I removed the angled point on the foot's toe because I want to make the top of the foot taller and flat. In sheet metal, almost everything is a bend. Clicking bend creates a length on the face that is selected. It also makes the entire body green. We'll adjust the length because I want the new bend to meet up at the top of the foot. When working on sheet metal, you always need the bend's radius to be larger than the thickness of your metal. Sometimes the radius should be twice as large. The larger the radius, the stronger the bend. The only sheet metal feature that is left to change is the angle. Essentially, bends are just length, radius, and angle. This space here is actually a pad. This is a core feature to FreeCAD. I'm going to make it smaller so that the heel lines up with the top of the foot. If you wanted to make this yourself, you could buy a CNC machine and cut your own sheet metal. Then you'd have to find a way to bend it into place. This unfold button allows us to see what it looks like before the bending process happens. Every joint on the leg will get a phalange bearing. I didn't order the holes threaded, so I'll have to tap them using an M4 thread. Normally, you'd want to use a drill press and not hold this with your hand, but I trust my level five cut proof gloves and my drill is set to the weakest setting. Also, this metal is soft aluminum. I'll be sure to apply almost no pressure and let the metal threads do their job. Tapped threads is a huge advantage to working with metal. Normally with 3D printing plastic, you'd have to buy hardware and consider nuts and threaded inserts into your design. Let's assemble this from top to bottom, starting with the hip. One of my design flaws was not having a plan for the gap because my bearings are thicker than this two millimeter metal, but a small washer between the bearing and sheet metal does the trick just fine. Now it's time to test the thigh and make sure it's connected at the right angle. A downside to sheet metal prototyping is how much danger is involved with thin moving metal parts. It's important to keep fingers and hands away from moving parts as often as possible. Now it's time to test out the calf. Last thing to do is connect the foot. And there we have it, a fully assembled robot leg. Let's wire it up and test it out. Before we test, I want to talk about today's sponsor, PCBWay. They provide a lot of services from sheet metal fabrication, 5-axis CNC machining, 3D printing, with any material you can imagine, even 3D printed metal. They can make you almost anything. They previously made us this Arduino PCB that I designed myself for projects just like this that require a lot of power, but also power the Arduino Nano. You should check out their website. The link is below. I wrote a program to loop through all the ranges on each servo motor. And honestly, this movement looks cooler than any walking sequence I tried to come up with. If you're a regular viewer, you might recognize this leg. It's based off of our three-legged walking robot, Tripedal. I was inspired by combat robotics to try and build a full metal Tripedal to maybe one day compete. I'm currently building a new version of Tripedal because the old one had too much flex in its joints, so I'll need to add a bearing to every joint to restrict unwanted movement. The old robot actually uses all the same size servo motors. The new robot is more realistic. It has bigger servo motors in the thighs, 
medium-sized one in the knees, and little ones in the ankles. Also, its center foot will be a planetary gear pancake. This way you can spin 360 continuously without lifting up off the ground. Another huge upgrade is fitting a full-size Raspberry Pi under the hood. This is basically a mini computer. We still have space for the servo power module and better wire management. No need to hot glue the power button on this time. Raspberry Pis are not native to analog pins, so we can't get a lot of sensor information out of them without adding a new module. I'm going to go ahead and add an entire ESP32 board to handle all my sensors. Tripedal is becoming a real electrical engineering project and has a lot of compute. My biggest takeaway from this project is you should 3D print your sheet metal parts before you order them. Even though the 3D printed plastic is too thin to withstand working loads, you can still fit everything together and make sure your parts are perfect before you order them. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hacker Twins out.